Amen. Amen. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven and celebrate God for the privilege to be in his presence today? Give him thanks for blessed is the man that God chooses and that he calls to approach unto him. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, even of thy holy temple. Satisfy everyone today, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Today, the world celebrates the Father's Day. So, happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of May the blessings of fatherhood. Rest upon all fathers in this church family Amen. and all our online worshipers Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that your children will rise tomorrow and call you blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is by the blessings of Father that people prevail. I decree that from today onward, each one shall become a fountain of blessings. Amen. That from now you'll be proclaiming blessings all the time. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No curse shall proceed from any father's mouth to their children anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray for grace yes. to be an example Amen. to our children Amen. in all areas. Amen. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for sweet home. For all fathers. Amen. There shall be no breakdown. Amen. There shall be no separation. Amen. There shall be no divorce. Amen. The wisdom of God that builds homes is released upon all our fathers. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Your children will not travail. Amen. By the blessings coming forth from you, they shall always prevail. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray for good old age for all of our fathers Amen. and their spouses. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Someone was so successful as a father that even in heaven they call him Father. That's Abraham, the father of us all. For if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and heirs are come to the promise. I pray for that order of grace to come upon every one father under the sound of my voice, Amen. and that belongs to this spiritual family, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Abraham was old and stricken in age, and God has blessed him in all things. All the days of your life, you shall remain under his blessing. Amen. And Abraham died in a good old age, and Isaac, his son, buried him. None of the fathers here will bury their children. Amen. None will die young. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No one will bury their children, yeah. and no one will die young. Yeah. In Jesus' name, Amen. and so shall it be. Amen. Now, ask the Lord to speak to you right now. I want to hear from you on this covenant day of favor. Connect me to your favor agenda for your children. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. We have prayed. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. Now, show us that which we know not. Amen. And take us to our next level. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. That is also my Give Jesus a big hand, please. And be seated. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah 44 and verse 26, God said, I'm the Lord that confirmed the word of my servant and performed the counsel of my messengers. 
And he said, I'm the Lord, I change not. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. Whatever name made them called any of those animals, that was the name by which they were called. By the Spirit of God, last Sunday was called our covenant day of settlement. And God stepped in and settled someone under 24 hours. Today has been named the covenant day of favor. It will mark the end of every trace of misfortune on anyone's life. Amen. Misfortune shall not be named with anyone under the sound of my voice anymore from today. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. The things that you receive, they are reflected by your response. Your response. Your response. Somebody said, I shouted amen as if I were the only one there. Because that word was his word. And he received it. And so he's empowered to become it. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, today, yes. no misfortune shall be named with anyone under the sound of my voice anymore. Amen. It shall not be named with your children. Amen. It shall not be named with your spouse. Amen. It shall not be named with your business. Amen. Ups and downs comes to an end in your life today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable. That's our teaching series for our Sunday services this month. There is no comparing the returns from serving God in truth and the interest of his kingdom with any other kind of job or position on the earth. Unmatchable, incomparable. Sometime last year or year before, we met a lady that was coming all the way from Badagri and dropping at each point and distributing tracts. So we saw her at Yana Yesi here. And by the time we got to Georgia, we saw her again. So when we were moving, I just saw that tears were rolling down her eyes. So I stopped. I said, Car should stop. And I said, What is it? I'm a single mother. I have an eviction notice from where I'm living. I don't know where to lay my head. I said, you will share your testimony. Amen. Monday morning, she saw vacancy in a place and said, excuse me, see any, any apartment here? The woman of the house said, God told me that somebody is coming this morning for rent, give it to him. Wow. She became a flat owner mm. without paying a dime. Mm. So, listen to me. Favor is the natural portion of anyone that is serving God in truth and in deed. I remember that testimony yesterday. I was with tears of joy. Favor, 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 favor. Watch. From this prophetic season on, mm. you won't have to struggle for any good thing to happen in your Amen. life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its diverse interests. And all these things that others are struggling for shall be added unto you. The way God said it to me back in 1976 is that all these things that others are dying to get, they shall be added to you. Now, I decree, therefore, 
that your engagement in this season will bring you into that realm of endless favor. Amen. You are the one I'm talking to. Amen. <laughs> you, you are being ushered into your realm of endless favor. Amen. And that from this day. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me hear your loud yet. Amen. It pays the unmatchable. It pays the incomparable. Yes. It pays what is not obtainable anywhere else on this planet Earth. And you know our anchor scripture is Exodus 23 and verse 25 and 26. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God and he shall bless. His blessings makes rich and add no sorrow. He shall bless means termination of all curses. Generational, diabolical, spares, enchantment. Who can cause whom God has blessed? It's impossible. He shall bless not just having food to eat. He's eating without anything to do with sorrow. He's eating without concerns. He will bless your bread and bless your water. Amen. Hallelujah. And God's blessing is the cure for curses. I will bless them. He said, I will bless you and make your name great. And I will bless them that bless thee. But him that causes you, I will cause. Don't bother about them. Don't bother about them. Amen. I will cause them by myself. If I ask you, you may beg me not to. I will cause them by myself. I will inform you. Amen. 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 That's the security of his blessings. There is no natural blessing that has security. Amen. 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 But when God blesses, he secures the blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. No blessing of God on your life shall suffer a reversal forever. Amen. For whatever the Lord doeth shall be forever. That's why it's unmatchable. Now, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There is no contract of any appointment on the earth that will contain that. I will take sickness. No, they will help you manage your sickness. And if you are not manageable, they ask you to go. Because they are not paying you for, for being sick. They are paying you for working. Praise God. They are paying you for working. But I will take sick. That means healthy living. Health and wholeness. That's your portion from now. Amen. My God sent mentor by name, Kennedy again. She had this testimony one time that for 61 years, he didn't know how headache felt. How headache feels. He didn't know headache. He didn't know headache. That upon the sound of my voice today, all the days of your life, many will live to be 120 if Jesus started. Yes. You will not know how headache feels. Yes. For he that said, I will take sickness away from you is not a liar. He's a truth. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. There shall not be, there shall not cast their young, nor be barren among them that serve me in thy land. Who? No miscarriage. Physical miscarriage, social miscarriage, career miscarriage, business miscarriage, no miscarriage. No barrenness. You'll be fruitful in your body, fruitful in the field. Amen. Amen. Supernatural fruitfulness. That's the meaning. And the number of your days, I, God, will fulfill. So it, your life is not in the hand of the devil. I, God, will fulfill. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every threat on your life is finally destroyed today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Every sickness laying a siege on your destiny is destroyed here today. Amen. He said, but come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Come and learn of me. Come and find out the way out of your, your predicament, the way to your desires, and you shall find rest for your souls. So it is by the word we assess our rights in God. It's by the word that we assess our rights in God. Now, we have been looking at the benefits 
of serving God and what to do to make our stewardship qualify for the world. We go quickly to look at four of them this morning. Four benefits of serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Number one, it secures our future generation. My friend, that's not available anywhere else. There are too many XDs and X that around the world today. Great, great names in their times, but there's no trace. No trace. Serving God in truth and in deed secures our future generation. Abraham, my servant. Joe, Psalm 105 and verse 42. For he remembered this holy promise, and Abraham is servant. Now, Genesis 22, um, verse 16, the Lord appeared to Abraham. By my sacrifice one, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of, of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. Now, and in thy seed, future generation, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Man, from one man, that little nation is a most formidable force in world politics, in science, in technology, in academics, giants without number are from the seed of Abraham. Serving God secures our future generation. You know, whomsoever you yield yourself to obey, a servant ye are whom you obey. And he said, Because you have obeyed my voice. You have obeyed my voice, and thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you serve me in truth and in deed. That's your portion. Amen. No one will be branded a vagabond in your lineage. Amen. Your knowledge will carry redemptive dignity from generation to generation. Amen. That's not available anywhere else. Now it says, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandments. His seed shall also be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure forever. Every time you see obedience, you see servanthood that delights himself greatly in my commandment. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. I decree that everyone's lineage becomes a lineage of giants amen. from this moment onward. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Number two, serving God guarantees a good old age. What do I call it? And the number of your days I will fulfill. And in number of days, in Genesis chapter 6, yes. and the Lord said, My spirit shall no, not always strive with man, for that is also flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Amen. He said. God said. No. No, Moses. God said. 
But you lay, I lay before you life and death. Long life, medium life, and short life. <laughs> so David came and chose 70. David said, the days of our years are three score and seventy and ten. <laughs> and when he was seventy on the dot, he went to heaven. This is your choice. What will I be doing here at 120? You can choose 30 or 40 or 50. You know, in every uh, clothing store, there is large, there is medium, <laughs> and there is small. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. When I see somebody that is about twice my size and the cost is the same, I wonder why they are cheating me. <laughs> you know, because I'm medium and then it's large. And then they collect the same money. <laughs> so I want to advise all those uh, people doing things to graduate it according to size. <laughs> If your shoe size is seven, and somebody's own is 12, and you pay the same amount, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Some people's coat, <laughs> the clothes used is about three times the other, and they get the same amount from them. In case you start a fashion design, <laughs> try to look at it. <laughs> good old age. Abraham died in a good old age. Now, they also said that David died in a good old age. So what is good for you may not be what is good for me. You just make your choice in there. Glory to God. So it's not enough to be serving God. You'll make your choice. How long is your own good old age? And you are there. The reason I'm not holding to go to heaven is that we're going to be there forever. So why hurry? Amen. Forever is forever. So why are we holding to go there? Let's maximize this place that has a limited number of years. Amen. And I want to fulfill that number. Praise God. I so believe in it that I saw myself serving the communion table at an extreme old age. As far back as when I was in Kaduna, there are times you eat the word that the word begins to reflect. It's broad day vision, not night. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number three, serving God and the interest of his kingdom is a covenant platform for the rise of giants. If you consider my servant Joe, there is no like him on the earth. What was his pedigree? My servant. What became of him? He became the greatest of all men in the East. So serving God, that's Job 1.3. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. My servant. So everybody genuinely serving God and the interest of his kingdom emerges ultimately a giant in his field of endeavor. Emerges a giant in his field of endeavors. So serving God in truth and indeed is a covenant platform for the emergence of giants. That's why I know the way people in this commission pursue after God and the interest of his kingdom, I've said it prophetically several times, the highest concentration of giants in human history will emerge from this platform. Amen. 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 The highest concentration, the highest, that is, and that man was born there, that one too was there, and that one is there. Ah, everybody there is a giant. Yes. That will be our story. Yeah. Remember, he that winner souls is wise, and by wisdom kings reign. So serving God uppermost interest in life enthrones 
Now, hear this. And they that be wise shall shine, Daniel 12, 3, as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness, as these stars forever and ever. Eternal stars. Stars that don't rise and go down. Serving God and his uppermost interest on the earth, which is the salvation of the souls of men, makes stars of ordinary people, ordinary people. They don't look like it. I found David my servant. Amen. He found a teenager. With my holy oil, I anointed him. I made a national hero of a teenager by confronting Goliath. I'm bringing him now. I found David my servant. I've made a giant of him. I anointed him with my holy oil. As the oil comes on your head today, the giant in you comes alive. Amen. The giant in you comes alive. Amen. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. He remembered is Abraham is servant. Uh, man, Abraham had an army of 318 men. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That could take on the army of another nation and overrun them. We haven't seen greatness. Oh. It's just coming. It's just coming. It's just coming. Can anybody put a limit on how large your house can be? Amen. Praise God. No. 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 Serving God is a covenant platform for the rise of giants. You're on your way there. Amen. You're on your way there. Amen. Giants of global renown. Yes. You're on your way there. Amen. Number four, and finally, serving God secures divine presence. Amen. Which emits divine favor. His presence emits divine favor. Go to the world and pray the gospel. Long with you always, even to the end of the age. Divine presence. Divine presence. Matthew 28 and verse 18 to 20. Divine presence. And the Lord was with Joseph. Genesis 39 and verse 2. And he was a prosperous man. Man! God's presence made a slave prosperous. By a mission of favor. By what? Now, go to the next verse. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. <laughs> Amen. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. What? And Joseph found favor in his sight. And he served him, and he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, a slave. There is no home address. You know why Joseph could not dare go back home? Since they have told his father that he was dead. If any of them sees him before the father, they will kill him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they will kill him. Amen. They say, we saw the ghost of Joseph. We now kill the ghost. <laughs> Amen. No, they, will, they will kill him. And it came to pass, from that time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. He just was emitting favor because of divine presence. Now, from now, from this hour, in the name of Jesus, wherever your name is mentioned, favor will answer. Amen. If they have asked Joseph, what is your prayer request? Assuming they had a fellowship. Look, I'm here in this prison. What they say I did, I didn't do it. Just let God vindicate me. Let God vindicate me. Will you have asked that I can be, so I can be prime minister? No. 
If they pray that way, just in their mind. <laughs> prime war, prime prisoner. <laughs> I'm a prime prisoner here. Unjustly imprisoned. I don't have the accurate data of how long he stayed there, but no less than 10 years. Unjustly. But favor kept pursuing after him because of divine presence. With him. Even in the prison, he was a management staff. Amen. Whatever was done in that prison, Joseph was the doer of it. Amen. And then finally, he arrived in the palace. That's where you are going. Amen. The same way they sent for Joseph, he said, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. But when his word came, the king sent and loosed him, even the rule of, this, of the people, and let him go free. To where? No. He made him Lord over his house. Let him go free from prison to his house. And ruler over all his substance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To bind their princes. To bind his princes at his will. And to teach his senators wisdom. Psalm 105 and verse 17 to 22. That is multiple change of levels by favor. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the kind of experience you are living here with today. Amen. What to do for our stewardship to qualify for the world? We must serve God diligently. Serve God diligently, not casually. Serve God diligently is a rewarder of only them that diligently serve him. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. God had no respect for the sacrifice of Cain. But he had respect for the sacrifice of Abel. We serve him diligently. That word means business likely. You know serving God is a big time business with big time returns. Jesus said, don't you think I should be about my father's business? Paul said, be not slothful. In business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Diligent stewardship is what qualifies for the world, not casual stewardship. Proverbs 22, verse 29 says that a man that's diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, man. Number two, we must serve him sacrificially. Doing our best is diligence. Going beyond our best is sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Doing our best is diligence and going beyond our best is sacrifice. There is no word changer that runs a regular schedule. There is not extraordinary on its own. It's man's extraordinary input that makes it so. I've come to set fire on the earth. Luke 12. 49 and 50. And what we like will be already set up, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. It's a baptism of sacrifice that makes global stars. Sacrifice, sacrifice. How am I straightened? Stretched out until it be accomplished. There is no star without a scar. And the scar of every star is sacrifice. There is no star without a scar. And the scar of every star is sacrifice. Many stars are rising this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Finally, we must serve God unashamedly. 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 If you are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. If you won't go all out for me, I can't go all out for you. Mark chapter 8 and verse 38, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, 
of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with his holy angels. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. He's a power of God's salvation to everyone that believes. One of our precious daughters was leading in a lunch hour fellowship uh, and reading from Psalm 34, verse 10 in their office. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but did I see the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Once corner, there said, excuse me, madam, is having children a good thing? He said, yes. Okay, why is he not giving you one? She remembered the testimony of another that suffers such mockery. Jesus visited her. Amen. She became pregnant Amen. within that month. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. You know why mockery comes to disconnect you from your heritage? Amen. Mockery comes to disconnect you from your heritage. When Elisha was on his way to his next level by taking the mantle of Elisha, mockery from all the sons of the prophets. Ooh, deaf, daft, no sense, no brain. The Lord is taking your master from you today. Yeah, yeah, boy. You come and join us. <laughs> Amen. The mockery was intense and gruesome. But he kept going. By the time he came back, they bowed down themselves to the ground. Amen. They bowed themselves before him. They bowed themselves to the ground before him. You are just about hitting it. That's why the mockery is becoming increasingly intense. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Will you ever find anybody that God made without first being mocked? You can imagine the kind of mentality beholding concerning Abraham. You don't you know it's because this man has no child that is depressed and now he's having some brain waves. Because a man of that age is going, they say, Where are you going? They say, God said, He will show me. Shake on Shepherd Guy Velo commit suicide. This man is on a suicide mission. Ash. And they won't hear. He will say, God told them. <laughs> okay, when you now leave your house, where do you turn? To the left or to the right? They ask him, where are you going to turn? He said, he will show me. Ah. Did he tell you where the point is where you will turn? He said, no. He will show me as I go. It was first a mockery before his star came alive. It was first a mockery. Most people thought these boys have lost their place in destiny. They say God said you go and preach. Abba. No. <laughs> Mockery. Someone confessed, he said they had a prayer group that was praying. Brother David is confused. <laughs> Period. Let's pray for him. The only thing we can do is to pray for him. Because he won't hear, we say, God told him. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. If you hate the mockery, you hate the glory. If you hate the mockery, you simply hate the glory. The reason why many won't step up for Jesus is the dread of the mockery of man. Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, Endured the cross, despising the shame, despising the shame. Only those who despise the shame manifest the glory. Amen. Who for the joy that was set before him, Hebrews 12, 2. Endured the cross, despising the shame, and see him now set at the right hand of majesty, at the right hand of the throne of God. Grace to despise the mockery. So you can attain to the glory that God has ordained for your life. Receive it right now. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. We must serve God unashamedly. David said, I will speak of their testimonies before kings and will not be ashamed. 
Very quickly this morning, today is our covenant day of favor. We serve a covenant-keeping God. My covenant will I not break, nor alter those things that have gone forth out of my lips. A covenant is identifying the provisions that God has made and the conditions to meet for delivery. The condition to meet for delivery. God has a provision of favor for his people. But we must know how to entreat the delivery of that favor. He said, even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. So it has to be entreated. It's not something to wait for. It's something you have to know what to do to assess the favor that God has procured for you and me in redemption. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. First, be born again. That is the number one step to a word of favor. Be born again. New birth is a proof of God's favor that brought you into the kingdom. You didn't do anything to earn it. You are a product of God's favor by predestination. Romans chapter 8. 29. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might become the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. He chose us unto salvation from the beginning of the world. Amen. Amen. According as he has chosen us, Ephesians 1, 4. In him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So you are ordained for eternal life by election of grace. So being born again is an act of God's favor towards you and me. So new birth is a birth into a family of favor. But we are saved by grace through faith. Not of our own. It is the gift of God. It's not of works. Lest any man should boast. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's a pure election of grace. So being born again is what ushers us into the realm of divine favor with God. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, I know you're a teacher of the Jews, a renowned celebrity, but you must be born again. John 3, 7. Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. That's number one step into the realms of favor. Can I hear your amen? amen. So for everyone under the sound of my voice who has not born again yet, there is no way to assess in God's favor package until one is born again. What favor can you do to a man that is dead? Nothing. Number two, you want to assess God's favor? Continue to walk in the fear of God as your lifestyle. You know the testimony of Joseph, but I fear God. Genesis 42 and verse 18, but I fear God. You know how he reacted? To Potiphar's wife, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? And so our favor surrounded him. 
we must be committed to walking in the fear of God if we must keep enjoying the favor of God in our lives. From the book of Psalms, chapter 5 and verse 12, the Bible says, For thou, Lord, we bless the righteous with favor, without compass him as with a shield. First John 3, 7, it said, Little children, oh, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. So this doctrine of whatever you do does not matter. It's not right to. Oh. It's not right to. Oh. Let no man deceive you oh, with sweet words. He that doeth righteousness, there is imputed righteousness, the capacity to be righteous, then there is the choice to be righteous. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. At New Bath, we have the capacity to live righteously. But we have to make that choice and pay the price that goes along with it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. He that doeth righteous, except you have another Bible. Righteous. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9, and I think this is very important. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived. Praise God. Amen. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abuse of the with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you, past tense, past tense, past tense, past tense, past tense. Please note, only the fear of God entitles us to flow in the favor of God. Know that only the fear of God entitles us to flow in the favor of God. Number three, continue to walk in obedience to his word. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. If thou shalt diligently shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And verse 2, and all these blessings or favors shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So obedience attracts the favor of God. Obedience will always attract the favor of God. You saw God lavished his favor on Abraham because he has obeyed his voice. Favor, favor will always trail our obedience. Favor will always trail our obedience. Favor will always trail our obedience. Remember? Blessed is the man that feared God, that greedy delights himself in his commandments. His seed also shall be mighty upon earth, that generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure it forever. And that is you. Amen. Obedience may be costly. I've said that over and again, but the end result is priceless. Obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless. Finally, we committed to kingdom advancement stewardship. We committed to kingdom advancement stewardship. Thou shall arise and have pleasure and have favor upon Zion because the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. How? For thy servants say, take pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the dust thereof. 
Zion is the church of Christ. Yes. Amen. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. Come and say fearful favor. For everyone that takes pleasure in kingdom advancement, God has his fearful order of favor for them. Amen. Well, he's talking to you. Amen. Many, many among us will hit the realm of fearful favor in this season. Amen. The same way the king sent for Joseph, authorities of nations will be sending to many among us. Amen. God will announce the value he has loaded in you to the world around you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Here in this church we had, if you put the compendium of our testimonies of what God has made out of many ordinary vessels by just running after God and the interest of his kingdom. Uh, it will be an encyclopedia. People will just settle down with it and, and be doing research. The reality of heaven's favor being unleashed on ordinary vessels. You are the next in line. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Our kingdom of remnant uh, and divorce is diverse. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have your prayer closet. That's why it's even in old age you still bring forth food. God who sees your investment on the prayer altar in advancing his kingdom, he said, he will reward you openly. So everybody serving God on the prayer altar Praying for souls to be saved, praying for them to be established in the faith, praying for the word of God to be coming forth alive and fresh from our altar day in, day out. Praise God. Hallelujah. God who sees the, the quality of their labor in secret said he will reward them openly. Amen. Now, many of us, your time of open reward is here. Amen. Your time of open reward is here. Amen. Your time of open reward is here. Amen. He said, lift up from your eyes and look and see that the feed is white and ready to harvest. He that repent receiveth wages as he gathers fruits unto life eternal. Amen. So, so when he puts you on God's wages, which addresses all needs of your life, all areas of... When I sent you with the apostles' script to go and win souls, lack anything, they said nothing, nothing, nothing. Did you lack health? No. You lack protection? No. You lack good rest? No. You suffer nightmares in your sleep? No. They lacked nothing. They lack nothing. They lack nothing because they were out after souls that he sent them to. Can I hear your amen? Amen. You don't have the scriptural rule to preach, but you can invite. Invite the unsaved to church to meet with Christ who works salvation in the midst of the earth. Somebody was just going around and pulling people to come to church and then they got saved in church. And then he began bringing them in and bringing them in and then the heavens opened over him. Glory to God. Go. Compare them to come, that my house may be filled. Anybody can invite anyone. You don't need maturity for that. You saw a number of people in scripture, the same day they met Jesus, the same day they were advertising him. He said, go to your home and tell your friends how great things God has done for you. And the madman of Gadarene went. The following week that Jesus was passing by, by that way, multitudes gathered. She, she went blasting the good news. And multitudes gathered. The Samaritan woman went to town and the people came and got saved. Can I hear your amen? Amen. Well, the good news is you never run out of favor again. Amen. 
you never run out of favor again. Amen. He said, when the Lord is your shepherd, when his word is what guides your life, you shall never want. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall be following you all that day. That's favor. Following God compares favor to keep following you. Following God compares favor to keep following you. You'll never run out of favor anymore Amen. in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks for showing you what to do to walk in the realm of divine favor. For showing you what to do. He will never tell you and me to do what he has not engraced us to do. His commandments are not grievous. Give him thanks for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. How many truly received that word? Yes, Give the Lord the biggest clap of him. <laughs> Finally, as we close from this service, today's our special monthly anointing service. And what a day. Amen. Because among other things, the anointing makes you smell favor. It makes you smell favor. The anointing of Christ made all men to keep entreating his favor. They were connecting with favor by reason of the anointing on him. Psalm 45 verse 12. Verse 8, all thy garments smell of Maya and aloes and Kasha out of every palace we are in, they have made thee glad. Now, the daughters of Thea shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall enter. You, you, you just attract in favor by the anointing. Remember, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The sceptre of thy kingdom is a right sceptre. Thou lovest righteousness and hate and wickedness. Therefore, thy Therefore, God, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And all thy garments begin to smell favor. All thy garments. As you are anointed today, you'll be smelling favor the remaining days of your life. Yeah. As you keep yourself on the track of favor, on the covenant platform of favor, and you are anointed from this service today, wherever you may be around the world, Wherever your name is mentioned, favor will be answered. Amen. Many will be sent for this week. Amen. To be honored with honors that 50 years of labor can never attain. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. So expect a fresh smell yes. of favor yes. Yes. on your life. Someone will be called to deal. Amen. 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 Last Sunday, under 24 hours, yes. God said to someone, yes. that's the only one we received in terms of written testimony. I know many more were settled. Today, God will clothe you with favor. Amen. As this oil comes on your head, favor will keep answering. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. What's in the oil? Say with me, the Spirit of the Lord. First Samuel 16, 13, and David was anointed with oil in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord, not oil, came upon him from that day forward. The Spirit of the Lord in the oil came out. As you are anointed today, the Spirit of the Lord that destroys yoke will come upon your life. Amen. Now, one yoke we must look forward to See destroyed is the yoke of fear. Fear, fear, fear is one of the most terrible yokes that strangulates human destiny. Fear, fear. Twelve people were chosen, one from each tribe of Israel, to go and spy the promised land after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And they went. And 10 of them said, we cannot. Fear ensnared them. Fear robbed them of their promised land. That tells you the percentage of humans 
that are under the siege of fear. They saw God life. They were eating for free, sir. Eating for free for 40 years. Morning and evening. Abawa. Morning and they were eating. They didn't plan. They didn't reap. They were eating. There was a rock following them, servicing three million people with free water. Man, they say we are not able. We can't take it. It's not possible. We were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And so are we in their eyes. Man, fear robbed them of their promised land. And God says, as you have said in my ear, so will I do to you. Your carcasses will fall in this wilderness. You will not enter there. But my servant, Caleb, and my servant, Joshua, they will get there. Amen. But my servant, Caleb, because he has another spirit with him and has followed me fully, he will I bring it to that land we are into. He went and his seed shall possess it. Fear, 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 fear. The Bible recalls, fear not, be not dismayed. 365 times in the Bible. Man, that's to tell you how we need to free ourselves from the yoke of fear. But it shall come to pass on that day, and today is that day. Yes. When the burden of fear shall be taken from your shoulder, yes. and the yoke of fear from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Yes. Watch. 32,000 men enlisted in Gideon's army. If anyone is afraid, let him go back. 22,000 went back. Now therefore proclaim in the ears of the people, say, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people 22,000. Amen. Amen. 22,000. And so it remained only 10,000. That's to tell you how much of human population lives under the siege of fear. That's 67%. Now that doesn't matter what position you hold. It doesn't matter how old you are. You're under the siege of fear. It's a bandage. It's a bandage. You'll be taking all kinds of Decisions that don't make much sense. You hear a gunshot somewhere and you are running. You, are, you have not identified where the gunshot is coming from. Amen. Some armed robbers were shooting and you are running into them. Mm. <laughs> I told you, I said, she had a story in the first service that one day we were in class during prep time. I mean, uh, we are all boys. And so somebody saw a snake. He's the only one, that, only one that saw the snake. <laughs> snake, snake. And everybody was diving through the windows. That is, the Louvre windows. People's heads were caught like this. <laughs> Everybody diving. Now, whether there are a, a thousand serpents outside, you don't know. That's fear. It paralyzes people's thinking. It, it stigmatizes people's reasoning. Amen. Just fear. Just fear. <laughs> there was a time the plane was misbehaving in the air. And then, it was a public plane. These air hostess I should be announcing that, uh, uh, take it cool. <laughs> Don't let me tell you this story. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you know they walk very decently and uh, <laughs> You so, saw <laughs> in decency. <laughs> People are desiccated. <laughs> now, fear is worse than coronavirus. Yes. It just destroys destiny. Sir. So, if fear had its way, we won't be in Canaan land. No, this is not a good place to be. But God said, this is the place. And fear tried to make us fear. We say, fear, we are smarter than you. Yes. And then no church holding in town. How dare you? What do you who do you think you are? No, no, we are not anything. We are simply walking in obedience. 
And fear had no way. Fear went back when he saw that there was no room. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, whatever you have lost to fear, I decree restoration now. Now, let me ask you a question. How many people in our marketplaces have been tested for (laughs) COVID-19? No. Do you ask anybody you want to buy something from, have you been tested? Is that of what? I don't know the meaning of COVID 19. Do you want to buy or get clear of so that somebody else can go? <laughs> Amen. Fear has shot in many people. Many right now don't believe their business can come up again. They don't believe it anymore. Well, if this is what God has made of it, no problem. If I die, I die. If you die, life will continue. Be free. As the anointing comes on you today, the dread and fear of tomorrow ends in your life. You know what makes a failure is a fear of failure. Everybody is a victim of what he fears. The things that I greatly fear has come upon me. No matter how righteous you are, living in fear will rob you of your best. And so, Job was robbed of everything that he had, but mercy found him because he stayed true with God. You won't suffer losses anymore. You see, your dream is inferior to the truth. You can't do anything against the truth but for the truth. You know, some will believe so much in their dream that the truth is secondary. Mm-hmm. My dream is always true because I'm Joseph. <laughs> Your dream? As far as the east is from the west, so is your idea and your dreams from the truth. Stop dreaming that your children die. No. Don't kill them. You find many people that had accident and survived. I, in fact, I dreamt of it. I dreamt of it. I almost died in that dream. It's exactly the way it happened. <laughs> because as a man thinks in his heart. I decree everybody's liberty from the yoke of the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, in conclusion, among the virtues in this oil is the healing power of God. Yes. Nobody goes from this service with any trace of sickness or disease in his or her body. Amen. Every terminal disease shall be terminated here Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus gave them the oil and they went and healing everywhere. Amen. When he gave them, he called the power. So the healing power is in here. He gave them power against unclean spirits. Amen. And they went and preached that men should repent and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Everybody that is anointed in this service is declared healed. Amen. The apostles took it over. He said, sick among you, let him call upon the elders of the church, let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. The end has come to that harassment on your head. Amen. By this anointing. Amen. What's in the oil? Another virtue in the oil is the breakthrough power of God. Say with me, the breakthrough power of God. David was anointed in chapter 16. Amen. He stepped into one breakthrough in chapter 17. The oil of chapter 16 walked him to confront Goliath and brought him down as a teenager. And then David has slain his 10,000 and Saul is 1,000. Amen. The story changed overnight. So I see you step into another realm of breakthroughs. As the oil comes on your head, everything that is holding you down at the same spot breaks off your life. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It shall be to you the oil of favor. David was anointed in chapter, verse 16, chapter 16, verse 13 of 4 Samuel. And the king begged for him to come and stay in his house. The king. They won't let him stay in his father's house. But the king said, come and stay in my house. So the anger of his elder brothers and other brothers was multiplied. For anointing him as king was a problem. Now to now go and live in the king's house. Abba. Ah, this boy is doing charm. <laughs> He was simply a servant of God and enjoying the favor of God. That's your new realm. Yeah. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Well, you are here today, wherever you may be in the world, and you want to be a partaker of this blessing of redemption among which is divine favor among which is liberty from the siege of fear among which is the healing power of God that entails to health and wholeness among which is breakthrough in all areas of your life and more importantly to secure eternity with Christ after your adventure on earth wherever you may be allowed to pray with you and in case you are there, you want to rededicate your life back to Jesus, I'd like to pray with you too. Wherever you are, please lift up your right hand and pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I surrender my life to you today. To Forgive me all my sins. Me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. I, believe you died for me. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again, rose that again. I might be justified. I justified. Right now, I, I believe that my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Now, be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. All that pray that prayer, I cover you with the blood of Jesus. You will run this race to the end. You shall not miss your steps on the way in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Congra Please send us your testimony of restoration, your testimonies of salvation. We'll be glad to partner with you on this journey and be helpers of your joy. You have the testimony um, address there, newbath at lfcww.org. I'll be glad to respond and uh, be partners with you in this race. Jesus is Lord. Shall we rise to our feet?